Assalamu alaikum, inshallah you're well guys. So I often get asked questions around qualifications which you can study to stand out. Stand out in your apprentice or graduate applications to help you with your university degree or a course that you're studying at college or just so that you can build an understanding of accounting and finance and decide whether it's the right career for you. One of those qualifications is the AAT, which honestly is a great qualification. It's something I studied for myself. If you have no prior accounting knowledge, you can start off at level two and then work your way up to level four. Once you've completed level four, you can become a member of the AAT. And that means that you can use the letters M-A-A-T after your name. One of the biggest negatives of the AAT qualification, and honestly, there's only a few negatives, is the fact that it can take you a long time to achieve. If you start the qualification from scratch, say at level two, you may find yourself studying for two to three years, which obviously is a long time when you're just looking to build an understanding of accounting and finance. So what's the alternative? And today I'm going to speak to you about the certificate in finance, accounting and business qualification, which is offered by the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales. Now you guys know that the ICAW offer a full chartered accountancy qualification called the ACA. If you study this, you can then apply to become a member of the ICAW and you can call yourself a chartered accountant. Now the CFAB qualification comprises of the first six exams of the ACA, which is also known as the certificate level. It's a standalone qualification. You don't become a chartered accountant by completing this, but honestly, I think it's a great alternative to studying for the AAT. Just to give you a bit of an overview of each of the exams. So the first exam you could study for is accounting. And as part of this, you're getting an introduction into financial statements, accounting records, how these are prepared and maintained, and how would you deal with any omissions or errors? The second exam is assurance. And as part of this module, you'll understand what is assurance? How do we obtain assurance? Why do we need it? Audit being one form of assurance. You'll also understand what are internal controls and how do we identify weaknesses in an organization's control environment? Then you also have the law exam. So as accountants, we are expected to be ethical, comply with the law at all times. So you'll understand some of the legal issues, some of the challenges that accountants may face, the different type of contracts that you may come across and the roles of different stakeholders, such as directors and shareholders. Then you've got management information. So as part of this, you'll understand different budgeting methods, how organizations assess performance, the different metrics they may use, and also cost pricing. So how the cost of products and services are used to influence the price that we sell them at. Another exam is business, technology, and finance. So this will give you more of a holistic overview of how larger organizations operate, the role of different business functions, the roles of different departments within finance, and what information they produce and what that information is eventually used for. Last but not least, we have principles of taxation. And this was my favorite exam at the certificate stage. Here you're studying the different types of taxes in the UK, how to calculate these, and the penalties for non-compliance. So if you don't submit your return on time, what will happen? And if you're running a business or a side hustle, this may be a useful module for you. So now that you guys know about the exams, how are you going to be assessed? So the assessment takes the form of a one and a half hour exam, which consists of 50 questions. And these are short format questions, so it won't require essays or writing or complex calculations. In fact, a lot of these questions will be multiple choice. The pass mark itself is the same as the ACA qualification, so you have to get 55% to pass each exam. And you must take the exam at an approved test center, so you can't do it at home or at work. Another benefit is that you can take the exams in any order. So you don't have to study accounting first. Say you've got a side hustle and you are interested in building a career in accounting and finance. You may want to study principles of taxation first because that can help you in running your side hustle. And it's absolutely fine to do that. You can also choose how you wish to study. So you don't have to attend class. That is one of the options available. If you did want to, you can do online learning or even self-study. And although the ICAW recommend around 18 months to complete the qualification, it is definitely possible to complete this within 12 months. So right now, it sounds great. You can study for six exams. Once you pass those, you've got a qualification which helps you stand out. You can achieve this within 12 months, but there are costs involved. So let me run through those. The first cost you'll have is the ICAW registration fee. So before you can actually go ahead and take the exams, you have to register with the ICAW and that costs 
180 pounds plus VAT. So once you've registered, you'll also have to purchase the study manual and question bank, which I highly recommend for each module. And for each exam, those materials cost 33 pounds. And then once you're ready to sit the exam, you'll also have to pay an exam fee, which will cost you around 72 pounds per exam. So the minimum investment in studying for these exams is around 800 pounds, but they can be additional costs, which depend on you. If you want to do an online learning course or attend a classroom, tuition providers may charge you around 500 pounds per exam. So the total investment may cost you around 4,000 pounds. And you may be thinking at this stage, hold on a minute, why do I want to study for the CFAB qualification when you can study for free for the AAT qualification in a lot of colleges if you're under a certain age. And there's a few benefits to studying for the CFAB over the AAT. The first obvious one is that it will take you less time to achieve this qualification. So if you were to go to college and start off at level two and work your way up to level four with the AAT, you're looking to spend around two to three years studying. Whereas actually, you can go and study for the CFAB qualification privately and complete it in as little as one year. Secondly, the CFAB qualification is a stepping stone to becoming a chartered accountant. So to complete the ACA qualification offered by the ICAW, you have to do 15 exams. And with the CFAB, you've already studied for six of those. You've already completed those six. So you only have nine exams left over. Now I do have to say that studying for the AAT also gives you exemptions from the ACA. So if you complete certain modules within the level four qualification of the AAT, you will be entitled up to a maximum of five exemptions. So you're essentially an exam ahead if you've studied for the CFAB qualification, but also guys, to get the level two, level three, level four AAT, you have to study around 15 exams. So actually, if your goal is to become a chartered accountant, you're gonna study 15 exams at the AAT to eventually get five exemptions from the ACA, or you could skip those 15 exams and do the CFAB qualification and you've done six of the 15 ACA exams already. The best benefit of studying for the CFAB qualification versus the AAT qualification in college is that if you're 18, 19 years old, you don't have to attend college. So you can use that time to focus on a side hustle, take on a part-time job. You can study for the CFAB qualification at your own pace. Whereas if you're studying a free course at college, you are expected to attend college at certain times during the week. So actually, even though the CFAB qualification may cost you around 4,000 pounds compared to getting it for free at college, because you're able to study at your own pace, you will be able to focus on your side hustle, a part-time job, building money, which would cover the cost of that qualification. And guys, I always say to people, whenever you want to consider studying for a course or a qualification, always think, what are the benefits? What are the opportunities that are going to open up for me? Are there going to be any opportunities? And I definitely think that is the case with the CFAB. You can use it as a stepping stone to becoming a chartered accountant, or you may be in a current finance role and you could show your employer that you're quite serious. You've done the CFAB by yourself and they may then sponsor you to complete your chartered accountancy qualification. You can also use it to get to university because the CFAB, like the level four AAT, is seen as the equivalent of the first year of a university degree. So you may use it to gain direct entry into year two of a related degree. So I hope you found this video useful guys, a bit of information around CFAB, why I think it's a good alternative to studying for the AAT. I will leave a link to some frequently asked questions in the description below, but inshallah, I'll leave it there guys. As always, any questions or queries, please feel free to comment below or message me on Instagram.